All right, so today I'm hoping y'all will all figure out how to use index fossils to tell time sequence. So I wanted to start off just talking about fossils a little bit and how we use rocks to help determine age, environmental factors, and, and such things. So I wanted to start off with a little question. If we were to throw a birthday party, there's no wrong answer to this. It's just kind of see what you know. If we're throwing a birthday party for the Earth, how many birthday candles would you put on the cake? 500 billion. If you want to write it on your board real quickly. Draw 500 billion candles? Oh no, just the number. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to just hold that up when you're done, Let's see if maybe if you want to mention why. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of billion. Steven, would you like to say why you mentioned 4.6 billion? Um, because I feel like I learned in astronomy class. For the age and years of the Earth? Yes. Rachel, did you have, I saw five, I think? Yeah. And why did you say five? Five candles, one representing 100 billion years. So five billion. One, one billion, 100 billion? Okay, well, I just wanted to see a little bit of what you might know about the geologic time scale. Um, some people could have used like four for the eras or 12 for periods. Um, we've already talked a little bit about the geologic time scale, but just a reminder, we do usually use some distinct features, as they say, to help classify certain periods throughout time. We have first coal forest starting off, ending the Pennsylvanian, uh, first placental mammal starting the Pliocene. So just a few rough outlines about the geologic time scale. A few other things about geology. We have the law of superposition, which Nicholas Steno, I believe, came up with in like the late 17th century. And all that stating, let's say we have a sandstone column, a slate followed by another sandstone column. What this is saying is that Deposits are laid down sequentially on top of each other, so we know that this layer will be younger, and this uh, layer down here will be the oldest. There are things that change that up, but everything will be will be deposited in sequential order. Um, rock types can also tell us about env environmental indications. A pretty cool general thing. If we're looking at deposits of stuff off a shore or coast, we might find a column here, but if we have the water level here, and we have a lot of waves crashing in and a lot of activity up here, we're going to have quartz and sandstone, followed by smaller deposits further away from shore, which will later metamorphose into slate, and further even yet are the smaller particles, which will become limestone. And does anyone have any idea why sometimes sandstone might have covered up slate, like in that last example? We had sandstone to slate to sandstone. Steven? If the water level decreased and went down over time, or if, or if it went from a lower place to a higher place, so the on lap and on right. flat. So as Steven was saying, let's say the water <coughs> line were to drop. We would see a new belt of sandstone coming from here and such forth, slate and limestone. If we were to look at a stratigraphic column right in this area, we'd see the sandstone to slate to sandstone. So we can interpret things like sea levels rising or sea levels decreasing for transgression and regression. So a few, another like, oh, I passed this around a little earlier. If you want to get this going around, I just have a little fossil that I collected. I'll start talking about it since I forgot to pass it out. But that is deposited in limestone, and I gathered it here in our country. Does anyone have any idea of where I might have found it? So I guess, yeah? Ohio. Ohio. And why do you think Ohio? Because I'm from Ohio. And okay. we have a lot of fossils in some Okay. Country. Anyone else? <laughs> here in Marquette. Close. I found it just south of here on Lake Michigan. And what, you can check it out later, but we know that those same creatures are still alive in warm, shallow, tropical seas. 
So that fossil is evidence to help lead us to know that Michigan was once near the equator and was in fact covered by a shallow warm sea. So the quick principle of fossil succession, fossil organisms succeed one another in a definite and determinable order and therefore any time period can be recognized by its fossil content. So basically, if we look at a rock and we see a fossil within it, if we know from when that fossil was alive, we can help relatively date when that rock's from. So here are a couple index fossils that we refer to. And you'll see these ones are mostly by periods, but you'll see certain fossils for each period. So relatively speaking, if we found a rock on the other side of the world with this fossil here in it, and another one somewhere else in the, on this planet with this fossil, we'll know that relatively this rock is younger than the other one. You can start to use all these to kind of piece everything together and figure out the age of rocks. It's just to emphasize index fossils, I'd like you all to make a circle or a globe. This would be our little planet. And there's three key characteristics of an index fossil that makes it a good index fossil. So the first thing we want to do is make a distinctive fossil. Um, you can use like a letter of the alphabet or a little figure if you want. If you just want to make it outside of your globe, it needs to be distinctive though. So you're going to create your own fossil. Just something simple. Characteristics we're going to want is we want it to be globally spread throughout. Um, it needs to be abundant throughout the whole planet. So if you want to make your little fossil creature in your circle all over the place, just everywhere, fill it in, take a few seconds. And lastly, we're going to want to make sure that this fossil, this organism, was only alive for a short duration. Because if this is something that's been alive for billions of years, it's not going to be very useful. So if you want to just go ahead and pick a period that you want to make, say that this fossil was alive. Okay, that way we'll make sure that we know that it was just alive for a short period. So again, an index fossil is an index fossil. If it's distinctive, if it has characteristics where we can easily identify it as that specific species. And we want it to be abundant across the whole planet so we can compare rocks from here to rocks in Africa, rocks in Australia. And we want that species to have a short duration of life or else it may be confusing. But it's not going to be very helpful if we know that Stephen's creature that he made was alive for two million years and it was only found within this room right here. You know, we're not going to be able to correlate that to any rock in another continent or something. So what geologists need to determine is the geologic range during which particular organisms lived. And that way we can set up a geographic range model to help determine when a rock may have been formed. And instead of looking at actual rocks, I thought we could just make our own geographic range model to try and help demonstrate what I'm talking about. So I found a few pictures that we're going to interpret as rock structures with fossils within them. Oh, here's an example of a geographic range model. So we have these species here, and you can see that they, certain species are only alive for a certain amount of time. So if you were to find a, a rock and it had species 12, 11, and 10, you can relatively say that that rock formed during this time period. So here's one of the first uh, rock structures I found. And it looks like Stephen and Ellen. I don't know when this picture was. But there's one. Oh, oh there's Stephen and Shane. I'm not sure. When that picture was taken, either. I found that one. Shane's just a baby. Aww. Oh, and Lisa's holding on. 
and <laughs> I wasn't certain, but I think that's a Miss Mary in the mill yes. with uh, <laughs> Stephen and Lisa. But the one that really got my attention, oh, this one. Okay, so I've noticed nice. that not only Stephen, Mary, Ellen, Shane, and Lisa, all nice. this picture, but this must have all been at one time. So I want to look at this as an interpretation that we know that these five were all in college at this, when this picture was taken, those five were all enrolled in college. So I'm going to start trying to figure out the geographic ranges of all of these people when they were in college, slash when these organisms may have been alive, to help determine when this picture was taken, because I want to know. And we're just going to say it's the year 2018, so that we can give ourselves a little extra time. So, Stephen, when did you start college? 2004, three? Uh, or yeah. so? Let's go with that. Okay. <laughs> well, three, four. Twenty seventeen. Look at that. So we're gonna put Stephen up here as he started in 2003. I think he graduated and left our presence for a little while. 2007. Okay, we'll, just, we'll say you're here for 2007. And you came back for a few years, said you wanted to be a teacher. Okay, and Ellen, when did you start? 2004. 2004. Graduated in 2008. Oh. And then came back. Okay. Says. Oh. Came back 10, 11. Well, so, so this is our year. Oh, no, we don't know that. It's the year 28, 2017. And then you happily graduated in the year 2014. That was really nice. It was really nice when you did that. Lisa, she got a little bit later of a start. Uh, I was six. And then she had this really cool class in the winter of 2012, but decided she was going to drop out afterwards because she just really didn't like education very much. Mary started in 2008 and took her a little while to get out of here. She graduated in the year 2017. And Shane, Shane was a brilliant student. He came and got out of here in four years. So now we got to try and look at this. It might be a little messy. Okay, so we've determined the geo geographic range of all these specimens. Well, we, we know that all five of them were here one year, at least all together, taking one class. Does anyone see a year, there may be more than one, that all of these students were attending NMU? Uh -huh. 2010. Any other years? 2011. 2011? 2012. 2012. Any others? Shane? Uh, right, never mind. Those blurred together, that's it. So what we see here is that there are three different years this picture may have taken, may have been taken. So what we can do is just relatively age that rock specimen and to knowing that it was in fact during one of these three years that this picture was taken therefore we can rule everything else out so that would be a it's kind of just a simple way of if you were to use specimens for specific species to figure out their how are we doing that? we're out <laughs> well these are cool it's a pretty in-depth one mm -hmm. uh, there's another cool way to correlate rocks together from miles away, and, and there's a few great questions I'll ask you about that some other time. Okay. <laughs>